Hi, and welcome to Sprout Chat, a monthly conversation with marketing professionals designed to share insights with our community. You're here with your hosts. I'm Joe Huber, the customer community strategist here at Sprout Social. I'm Olivia Jepson, our social media specialist. And this month, our guests are Levi Olmsted and Kristen McCabe from G2. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so every month we like to start with an icebreaker, and since at Sprout we think that feedback is one of the most generous gifts you could give, what's the best gift you've ever received? The best gift I received is from uh, my best friend in Australia. And right before I left to move back to Chicago, I lived there for a little bit, um, she put together this scrapbook for me that had all of our pictures from like all of our adventures and all of our escapades and everything and like all the little quotes and inside jokes and everything. But it was the time that made it special. So. Uh, mine was I do Reddit Secret Santa every year. Um, and I came home from the G2 Christmas party, um, had my Reddit present uh, outside, picked it up, uh, opened it, and it was, they had done a ton of stalking on me. They figured out I had a dog, his name, that I liked Game of Thrones, I went to Indiana. They made me a Game of Thrones uh, emblem, a house emblem, had Frodo's face on it, had a bunch of really cool personal things that still is hanging on my wall today. Wow. I've never done that to someone I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, mine is both my cats, Kingston and Kenny, but... Kingston's definitely my favorite. I hope if Kenny's I can not say watching. So. I mean, I would feel bad if she was, but <laughs> it's the truth. So. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, well, when we asked everyone on Twitter, a big thing was higher education. A lot of people had gotten scholarships or gifts from family, which was obviously huge. And a lot of people talked about experience as well. Um, I'm not going to talk about experiences at all because my favorite thing was the, the, the pizza thrower and the technodrome from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from when I was a kid. It was a lot of fun. I loved that gift. Um, thanks for playing along, though. We, we always love the icebreakers. It's everybody. It's great for everybody watching as well. Um, we're talking about feedback this month. We could not think of two better guests because G2 is all about feedback, and you two know so much about it, so we'd love to do it. Uh, let's get started, shall we? All right. The first question is, define what feedback means at G2 and why it's important to your organization. Yeah. Um, feedback's kind of everything at G2. Um, everything's built off feedback. I mean, that's kind of what our company does is reviews. Uh, um, but even more than that, uh, when you look at our management styles, uh, we do 360 feedbacks. We do tiny pulse surveys, uh, anonymous surveys. Um, we do our all hands and we ask Slido questions and get feedback directly from our uh, co-founders. Um, but yeah, even to our customers, we want reviews from our vendors and the software companies listed on G2. We do campaigns around having our reviewers who are actually reviewing the software, leaving us reviews on Facebook. Um, it's kind of just built into everything. It's built into yeah. our DNA. Yeah. I, I think another word for it at G2 is transparency as well. Um, I think there was an old blog post when I started that was telling marketers that it's time to get naked <laughs> with the play on transparency. Um, but the trust that comes out of transparency, trust in buying is a big thing. The founders, they, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, <laughs> um, but the whole reason that G2 was started was because they realized how, you know, you can look up TripAdvisor reviews for a hotel for like $200, but all the time and money that goes into buying software, there was nowhere to go for real user-generated feedback that you could trust. So the trust and uh, credibility that comes from feedback, and then for us in the company with our co-founders and everything, the transparency is also leads to that trust. Yeah. Transparency is such a big thing in marketing right now. And obviously, thank you very much, too, for spending time to define exactly what that means to you because we're going to be talking a lot about it, so it's good for us to have common definitions. Why is customer feedback, then, important for marketers? I think customer feedback is important for marketers for a few different reasons. Um, one, it helps build trust. Um, you are listening to you know your users. People are using your product or your company or your brand. Um, Two, it's a great way of building brand advocates. Um, what better way than listening to feedback from your users, uh, uh, hearing what maybe is bad with your product or platform, what's great about your platform, um, and then listening to that feedback and, and building in your product roadmap uh, based on what those users are saying. Uh, one of my absolute favorite professors he had for a marketing class, this Japanese saying, it was Genchi Genbutsu. I'm probably saying that completely wrong, so <laughs> forgive me there. But it means go to the source. And so for everything you do, he was saying, you can't just trust spreadsheets and numbers and data. You have to talk to actual people yeah. to understand their actual stories and their unique situations. And I think feedback is especially important because 
if you think about how busy we all are, like I don't have time to text all the friends I want to text and email and everything. So if someone is taking the time to interact with your brand, that means that they have a real connection with you, hopefully a positive one. But either way, they're reaching out to you, which means that you matter to them, that they care. And Chrissy brings up data. Um, the data backs us up with marketers. 95% uh, of people, uh, when they're making a buying decision, are going online and looking at reviews. 92% of B2B buyers are going online before they make a decision, and they're using reviews to make their decision. Um, the stats back it up, and if brands aren't on board with feedback, they're going to get left back in the dust. Numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. <laughs> Another number. We have lots of stat numbers in our heads when it comes to reviews, but. In addition to trusting reviews, um, unfortunately, I think there's not all of us, not anyone here, but a few marketers have given the rest of us a bad name. So um, only 34% of B2B marketers trust vendor content. So we have less and less trust in us as marketers, but buyers trust each other. So sure. you can yeah. still leverage that. Yeah, and I think like when you were sharing those stats on Twitter, people were eating that up. And I also think that like, our audience said a lot that um, basically marketing, if marketing is about growth and innovation, then feedback is the gasoline. And so how can you make sure that you're gathering that feedback from your customers? The best way is to ask for it. Um, there are multiple studies that have shown, and this is something I notice myself as a computer, like I'll read the stat and then I notice it happening, <laughs> that when you ask for a review, your star rating is proven to go up. That was a research study done with the Spiegel Research Center. and People are more likely to, when you send emails out, you're going to get reviews asking for them, or yeah. answering. Yeah, and I think it's just kind of thinking where your customers are and your pain points for your customers in their journey um, and figuring out just where to ask. After um, a customer service ticket, after you've, they've been onboarded, after, I don't know, you, you release a new feature, you know, mm -hmm. uh, asking for a review, it's just the ask that is showing that you care and you want their feedback, and you want to somehow incorporate that into your product roadmap or your brand. And I think as long as it's done respectfully and politely, it's also a good idea to do a follow-up asking for a review because everybody is busy. Personally, I feel bad saying this, working in a review company, but I have so many reviews for businesses I love that I want to write, and I just forget or run out of time. So it's totally okay to send a follow-up email and ask again, as long as you're not being pushy or demanding about it, because that could also affect the review itself. So so one of the things you said there is that one-to-one -one interaction. And I think about that constantly, because as a marketer in community, I always think about how can I have those one-to-one -one interactions? How can I build on that? How can I get feedback from people directly who are going to tell me exactly what they want? And then I ladder that into my own strategy. And so when we think about that, how can your team use feedback to fuel your marketing strategy? As a content marketer, I love using reviews to create content, so you can do them on social media and um, all over the place, but don't forget about your landing pages as well. Um, Andy Crestodina, one of my favorite marketers in Chicago, he is a big advocate as well for using reviews on your landing pages for testimonials. Um, you can use multiple reviews and then just make sure anything you use you have permission to use and you're following all those guidelines. But um, I remember when I just started at G2 and I was trying to make landing page copy and I was like, Oh, I'm so stuck, you know, trying to make that perfect copy that you know is going to like grab people and get people's attention. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm telling all these marketers to use reviews. <laughs> Maybe I should go check G2 reviews. <laughs> so I did. And I remember some of the headings, I started a spreadsheet, which I would highly recommend doing. I have a spreadsheet that has like the quotes that I can use and the different quotes for it and headlines for them. Like one of them was G2 is a marketer silver bullet. So those are the things that we don't think to say ourselves because we're trying so hard to think of it. And when it's coming from your customer, it's so much more authentic because they really mean it. So. Yeah, and reviews and feedback give marketers like a lot of really cool weapons in their, to uh, their toolkit. Um, video reviews are really big right now. It's so much more authentic when you're on camera talking face to face. <laughs> um, you also have really cool uh, ways of people using reviews that you maybe outside the box that you don't normally think. Uh, one I really like is uh, sales teams. I know our sales team is doing it. Um, I've seen a lot of other ones as well use Sigster or whatever email signature tool they're using, and they're putting their reviews right there on their email signature, and everybody they're reaching out to gets to see the reviews from their customers right there. So we get a lot of reviews on G2, on social, and a lot of other platforms. 
but we like to turn that positive feedback into assets on social and on other things. So we created um, a hashtag called Sprout Love, and we like to share that on like Instagram. A lot of it comes from Twitter um, and other places, but it's important to like share that on your other networks. So kind of leading into the next question, um, it's not always positive. So what happens when someone doesn't love an update on your product, and what's the best way to respond to that? Yeah, I love this question. Um, a lot of marketers are really scared of negative reviews, and I think that's just a really silly thing. Um, if somebody's leaving you a review, uh, they, want, they want you to know. They're, they want to be heard. Um, and I think a lot of times when people are leaving reviews, they think they're going to be heard as well. Uh, so reaching out uh, and to that person that's leaving a negative review, letting them know they've been heard, um, and that you're going to send that to your product team, that you're going to get that ticket uh, into support, you're going to get that problem fixed and that you're listening to them is really important. Um, one, not to just feature, fix your feature of your product that might be broken, but just to let that person know that you're actually listening to them. Um, and I really think negative reviews are a great way to build brand advocates and build community. Yeah, I totally agree as well. When you have a problem and someone is unhappy, you can take that negative and turn it into a positive as long as you take responsibility for it and address the problem. And because actually, if you have 100% all positive reviews, like we've all heard and read the stories and seen on the news for Amazon, like people know and are on the lookout for fake reviews as well with the rise of fake reviews. So if it's overly positive, like people know that no one is perfect. The same way we're not perfect, no company is perfect. So if you try to present yourself that way, that goes back to the same reason why people don't trust marketers and the transparency issues. So, Having some negatives, uh, the ideal star rating to increase sales is actually 4 to 4.7, not 5.0. So if you have all positives, people are less likely to trust it. And also, no one to take it offline sometimes. I think everyone else is also reading that response to the review. So as long as you address it, you're not just building that brand advocate for yourself, you're building it for everyone else. And by addressing it publicly that like, hey, sorry you had this problem, let's talk about it that shows that you're willing to take the time to take it to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. Everything you said there ladders into empathy. It comes back to empathy, and that's really where we all sit and live with this. And that was something that came through on the Sprout Chat so much, was empathy building trust. And just going into that idea of, you're not shouting into the void. We hear you, I hear what you have to say, and if you can do that, if you can really take someone's feedback and then either implement it or at least let them know, I heard it. We might not do it, we might not implement it, but I heard it, you were heard. And if you can go there, that empathy then leads to trust. So if you want to have a good reputation, you obviously have to have empathy. So when we're looking at that, how do you build review management into your reputation management strategy? Um, I think one, just understanding reviews and knowing that you need to have a strategy, you need, you need to be prepared. Um, two, being, uh, setting yourself up for success with the right tools. Um, we work at G2, so we know that tools can help you be the best marketer, the best salesman, the best inner business name here uh, you can be. Uh, and having the right set of tools can really help you do that. A uh, social listening tool, a social media monitoring tool is going to help you with that feedback on social. Um, a little sprout social plug right there. Um, also, a broader uh, reputation management strategy, uh, an online uh, reputation management software tool um, that this listens all over the web. Um, if you are a restaurant, it's going to listen to Yelp. Um, I can't even think of another restaurant review website now. Uh, they've kind of cornered the market there. Uh, but yeah, a reputation management tool is going to help you make sure that your reputation online is perfect and that you're staying on top of those reviews. Um, also, making sure you're staying on top of those reviews in a timely manner. Uh, nothing worse than having a really bad review that points something really terrible out and you leave it there for two, three weeks without any sort of response from your customer success or support team. And in the same way, you also want reviews, new reviews regularly that, you know, the same way you would never just stop doing social media. You wouldn't be like, okay, I tweeted this month, I'm done <laughs> until next year. People want recency in their reviews. And studies keep changing that people want them more and more recent as well because they know that companies are always changing. So if your review isn't recent, then people don't know if they can still trust it and believe it. And a lot of the time social is on the forefront for reviews and for feedback, but no matter who manages your reviews and feedback, it's important to share those insights across your entire organization. Um, so what's your best tip for those looking to incorporate more customer feedback in their strategy? 
just get started, I would say, is the first thing. Because like so many things with marketing, as marketers, we're so busy and we have so much to do. Like First of all, just make sure that you're on a review platform. And you should also check to see if you are on a review platform. Because just because you don't want to be there, your customers might have already made the decision for you to be there. So like at G2, we have where you can check to claim your profile if you already work at the company, if your customers are already <laughs> talking about you. And then just start, send out your first email, talk to sales about um, asking their customers to start writing some reviews. I would say the same thing. Um, just ask. Start asking your customers. And then uh, I would say the biggest thing is just listen. Um, just listen to what they have to say. Um, don't really put a marketing spin on it. Don't put a sales pitch on it. Just listen to what your users have to say, and that's the best advice I think I can give to a company looking to get into reviews and feedback. So thank you. Those are really actionable tips. Um, Joe also made a really great point on Twitter today about proactivity and knowing how you're going to use that feedback before you get it. Yeah, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you very much. What I was talking about with that is you, you can really use it for anything, right? But if you're going to use user-generated content, if you're going to use reviews, whatever it is, know how you want to implement that before you just start getting things. Because a lot of times, I think we fall into that trap as marketers where we say, well, we want to get reviews, but we don't know how we're going to use that or we don't know where that's going to go. We don't know if that's going to fit into a strategy. We don't know if that's going to fit anywhere. And so we just go get these things and then we end up with things cluttering our timelines and our inboxes and now we're left with just a bunch of stuff to do but we don't really have next steps I think uh, yeah a good point with that is also like Levi and I said to just get started as your first step but then like anything else with marketing always test and refine so retest your review outreach when you're sending it what subject lines you're using um, how customers are reacting you know if they find your ask authentic or not and then which platforms they react to <laughs> and then which platforms they respond to most. I also think adding to that, um, taking it one step further and thinking about what's your marketing strategy, what type of industries are you looking to break into. Um, if you're looking to break into a specific industry, maybe asking your customers are in that industry already to give you some feedback. Um, if you're looking to improve your product, uh, uh, seek out people that are leaving uh, customer service uh, requests and tickets. Uh, try to reach the audience that you want feedback from. Thanks again, Levi, Kristen. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's really a great time. Also, uh, before I do anything else, I want to say happy birthday, <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. I know. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back next month with new guests and new questions. And if you want to learn more about the Twitter chat, you can follow us at Sprout Chat on Twitter. And be sure to join the Facebook group, also titled Hashtag Sprout Chat. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next month.